Though women have not always been able to fight in wars, publish books, or otherwise lead adventurous lives, this never stopped them. When disguised as men, from stepping up at taking care of business, these women, while pretending to be men, helped with wars, shaped nations, and established precedents for that all women are capable of. Cross-dressing has a very long list of historical purposes. While public opinion has fluctuated over history, men and women have been documented changing their genders for a range of purposes, including romance, espionage, or just outright fun. However, more often than not, women who disguise themselves as men, including many on this list, change genders to avoid persecution. A few of these women dressed up as men for a single battle, while others practically lived their entire lives as the opposite sex. The list begins with Joan of Arc, who was just a teenager when she helped lead the French army to victory. Prior to being a legend, Joan of Arc was just an ordinary 15th century French peasant girl, concerned about boys, her hair, the plague, you know, middle ages teenage girl stuff. One day though, a handful of saints came to her in a vision, stating that it was her duty to help lead France to victory over the English. Suddenly, Joan found her way into the royal household and was granted a military appointment, also known as armor, a horse, and instruction to fiend being a man. She was an outstanding military leader, and King Charles VII was very supportive of her. But the Burgundians and the English saw her as a threat. She was captured by Burgundian forces in 1430 and underwent a religious trial in 1431, culminating in her execution. In 1456, she was acquitted, a decision that opened the way for her eventual sainthood. Today, she is a saint in France. Hot ship suit built Egypt's major trade routes by wearing a beard. This woman for a long time was mistakenly viewed as a man, and much of her accomplishments were wrongly credited. Even though hot ship suit never forged her identity as a woman, she certainly took gender issues into her own hands. Hat ship suit was the second female pharaoh to rule Egypt and is considered one of the greatest rulers of the kingdom of all time, male or female. While it was no secret that she was a woman, Hatshepsut affirmed her authority by dressing in full traditional pharaoh attire, including a cat headscarf, kilt, and even a false beard. Hatshepsut succeeded in achieving the title of pharaoh after surmounting many obstacles. Following her father's death, Pharaoh Thutmose I's death, Hatshepsut married her half-brother Thutmose II when she was only 17 years old. Four years later, her husband and brother died leaving as heir to the throne a son she had with a concubine. However, since the boy was too young, Hatshepsut assumed power. For 22 years, she ruled Egypt alone, back when the state was one of the richest. We have received many requests already for a video about her and soon, an exclusive video about this woman will come out. We are continuing the list with the pirate Mary Reed, a woman who was more shrewd than Jack Sparrow. Mary Reed, born in 1690, was one of the only two females to be convicted of piracy at the heyday of buccaneering, and the other was Anne Bonny. She was the illegitimate daughter of a young widow. Her mother had gotten by on the upkeep money her in-laws provided for their now orphaned son before Mary was born. Following the boy's death, Mary's mother dressed as her half-brother in a bid to ensure that the upkeep payouts continued, as well as to cover up for the illegitimate Mary. The male costume went on to be a useful tool for Mary, especially during the piracy era. Reed would even join the British army posing as Mark Reed after her military ship was seized by pirates. Reed was forced to join them. Even though she did not eagerly join them at first, she learned to relish the pirate life and never quit. She ended up getting captured, tried, and sentenced to death, but perished before she could be executed. The revolutionary Maria Quiteria de Jesus was the first woman to join the Brazilian army. The young woman took the name Medeiros, but later ended up leading a female battalion, a milestone in the country's history. Maria Quiteria was born around 1792 in Fira de Setana, Bahi. When she was approximately 30 years old, she entered the Brazilian army, becoming the first woman fighter in the country. Her urge to join the war came about when Pedro I declared Brazil's independence on September 7, 1822. Upon hearing that her village had been asked to send men to fight, Maria was thrilled and wanted to join the movement. 
Nevertheless, when she told her father, the patriarch prohibited her from taking up arms. On the other hand, the young woman already knew how to solve this issue by disguising herself as a man. With her brother-in-law's outfit, Maria went into the artillery regiment, getting transferred to the battalion of the prince's volunteers. She fought in the battle at the mouth of the Paraguasu River, where she fought with water up to her chest. When Major Jose Antonio de Silva e Castro learned the true identity of his best soldier, he was surprised by the revelation. Yet the commander did not release Maria Quiteria, much less appointed her to domestic duties. Surprisingly, the woman assumed her true identity and adapted her uniform. Though the feminine props on her uniform could make her a big target for her enemies, she didn't mind. Dressed in a petticoat over her clothes and with a plume on her helmet, Maria Quiteria became the example for other women to join the fight. Like Joan of Arc and Maria Quiteria, there was another woman who dressed up as a man to fight in a war. She was the American Frances Louisa Clayton, who went down in history as Frances Clayton, when she disguised herself as a man to fight for the Union Army in the American Civil War. Under the alias Jack Williams, she enrolled in a Missouri regiment alongside her husband and fought in several battles. A housewife and mother of three, Frances found herself in daily life with the troops. She smoked, drank, and played poker without stirring anyone's suspicion. Different versions of how her identity was discovered exist, with one version telling that the truth came out after she was wounded and widowed. Apart from Frances, several other women dressed up as men to fight in the U.S. Civil War.